Today's lesson is lesson 1.1, graph quadratic functions in standard form. Standard form of a quadratic function is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where the a value is always the coefficient in front of the x squared, the b is always in front of the x, and the c is always the constant. A quadratic also, when graphed, forms a parabola. which are these two shapes right here. Parabola will either open up or will open down. If it opens up, the a value, which is in front of the x squared, will be greater than zero, be a positive number. If a is a negative number, a is less than zero, then the parabola will open down. An imaginary line that cuts the parabola in half is called the axis of symmetry. And the point where the parabola changes directions is called the vertex. The x-coordinate of the vertex and the equation of the axis of symmetry have the same value. So for instance here the vertex is at 0, 0 the axis of symmetry is x equals 0. The x value here is the same as this value here for the axis of symmetry. Okay, let's compare the graphs of, uh, of a parabola or a quadratic in the form y equals 2x squared. Now notice we have an A value, but we don't have a B or a C. When this happens, we know our vertex will always be at 0, 0. The 2 will affect how the probability either opens up or down and at what degree that it opens up or down. Or in other words, is it going to be tall and skinny or is it going to be short and wide? If the A value is greater than 1, so if A is greater than 1, then the parabola will be um, within the parent. If A is less than 1, like a fraction, then the parabola will be outside the parent. So let's graph this, y equals 2x squared, and compare it to the parent and see how this works. So to graph this, one way we can do it is we need to come up with some points. So we're going to make ourselves a table, an xy table, and just plot some points. So I'm going to use negative 1, 0, and 1 for my x values. If I put a negative 1 in here, negative 1 squared is 1, times 2 is 2. 0 squared is 0, times 2 is 0, and 1 squared is 1, times 2 is also 2. So if I graph these points, I have negative 1, 2, I have 0, 0, and I have positive 1, 2. And if I draw a smooth curve that goes through those points, I end up with my parabola that uh, coincides with my y equals 2x squared. Now if I were to graph the parent, which is y equals x squared, the vertex is still going to be at 0, 0, but if I go over 1, I'm only going to go up 1 because 1 squared is equal to 1. If I go negative 1, then it's only going to go up to 1. And you'll notice then that this parabola is going to be outside of my first one. So when A was greater than 1, which it was, it was 2, then that means that 
that parabola, this one right here, is on the inside of what the parent would be, which is the y equals x squared. Another example, let's do y equals negative one-half x squared plus three. So now notice I have an a value and I have a c value. The c value is always, what it does is it gives us the y-intercept or where this parabola is going to cross the y-axis. And the reason we know that is because if we go back to our original function here, in standard form, if I would put zeros in for both these x's, this is going to become zero, this is going to become zero, so y is going to equal the c value. So when x is zero, y is c, and that's the point that's on the y-axis, which is the y-intercept. So we know our y-intercept then is going to be at uh, zero, Three. So when we graph this, our y-intercepts at zero three. We know it's going to cross right there. Um, we can plot some more points to determine some others. X, Y. Let's use negative two, zero, and two. Put a negative two in here. Negative two squared is four. Negative one half times four is negative two plus three is equal to one. Zero squared is zero times negative one half is still zero plus three is three. And two squared is four times that is negative two plus three is also one. So if we graph this, we have negative two, one, positive two, one. And you'll notice if I form the parabola here. It's going to open down, which we knew because a was a negative number. It was less than zero, so we knew it was going to open down. Our y-intercept happens to be where the vertex is. That doesn't always happen, but it did in, in this case, since we didn't have a b value is why that happened. So if we compare this to the, to the parent, then we know the parent's going to go up and up so we know it it's changed from that because of the negative and since the a value is one half our new parabola is actually wider than the parent parabola would be like we've mentioned before okay so how do we graph one then that has all three parts x squared minus 8x plus 6. All right, in order to do this, we have an a, we have a b now, and we also have a c. a is equal to 2, b is equal to negative 8, and our c is equal to 6. So by knowing these values, a is greater than, one, than uh, 0, so we know this thing's going to open up. We know our y-intercept is going to be at 0, 6, and we also know that the vertex is going to be at a different location than on the y-axis because we have a b value now. Well, how do we figure out where that vertex is? So that will be our first, our first task. To do that, we have to use a formula x equals negative b over 2a where the b corresponds with the b value of our uh, function and the a corresponds with the a value of our function and this will give us the x value of the vertex. So this is the x value of the vertex. So if we substitute in then we know that x is going to equal negative b. b was negative 8. Notice I kept the negative sign with it. That has to be included over 2 times a, which was 2. This would be the same as 
8 over 4, which is equal to 2. So I know of my vertex, the x value is going to be 2. Now to determine the y value of the vertex, we need to take our x value, substitute it back in for the two x's in our original function, and that'll tell us the y value that corresponds with that. So we have y equals 2 times 2 squared minus 8 times 2 plus 6. And if we work all that out, it's going to equal negative 2. So we know our y value of our vertex is going to be at negative 2. So now, if we start to graph this, we know a few things. We know where the vertex is. It's at 2, negative 2. So it's going to be right there. We know it's going to open up. We also know that it's going to cross at 0, 6, which is our y-intercept. So we can put a point there. We also know from talking previously the um, axis of symmetry is that imaginary line that passes straight through the vertex. Okay, And what that means is it's going to cut this parabola in half. Well I know this half over here is going to look like this. But I also know if this thing folded over, lands over here, that this point will have its mirror image or reflection over here. This was two places away from our axis of symmetry, so if we go two places away over here, which would put us at 4, 6, we will have another point that's on this parabola. And then since we know that point, now we can draw our parabola, and it's going to look like that. Lastly, in this section, they talked about maximums and minimums. The maximum and minimum values are the values that are either at the bottom of the parabola or the top of the parabola. And so to, to know what those values are, since the y values are vertical, they go up and down, the maximums and minimums will be reflected or will be uh, used as the y values of the of the vertex. So we know if a parabola opens up that this point down here would be a minimum and if the parabola opens down that this point would be a maximum. And it would be the y value of each of those points. So in order to determine the maximum or the minimum of a quadratic, we have to find out where the vertex is or more specifically the y value of the vertex. Well in order to find the y value we have to know the x value first. You remember we used this formula x equals negative b over 2a to determine that. Our a value is 3 and our b value is negative 18. So if we substitute those in, we have negative of negative 18 over 2 times 3, which equals positive 18 over 6, which equals 3. So I know the x value of my vertex is 3, and then to find the y value, I have to substitute that 3 in for both x's in our original equation. So y equals 3 times 3 squared minus 18 times 3 plus 20. And if I work this out, I believe that's going to equal negative 7. 
So I know my y value is negative 7. So this particular equation, we know that it opens up because the a value is positive. So if it opens up, the vertex has to be at the bottom. So that would make this a minimum. And the value of that minimum then would be y equals negative 7.